Ladies and gentlemen, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the latest player announced for the 2020-21 season. Mr. Evan Mosey joins us now from Chicago. Evan, how are you doing? Good. I'm here with Kevin Delaney, my skills and skating coach. Best guy in Chicago. Hi, right, how are you? We're all good. We're all good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we're talking to you today because you're the Bro, latest player to be announced. Yeah? Your latest player to be announced, returning for a third year. How does it feel to be back? Feels good. I, uh, I don't know, obviously really enjoy my time in Cardiff. I, I like the guys and obviously the organization treats you really good. And last year, uh, kind of had a little bit of a roller coaster season and, and uh, the season didn't end the way we wanted it to with the, with the league being cut short. So obviously uh, it's nice to, uh, to get back and, and go back to Cardiff and just start where we left off. You mentioned that last season obviously wasn't ideal for yourself. As a player, how tough was that year to deal with from a mental standpoint, not being able to play, being up on the gantry watching all the time? Uh, it was good. Um, it was kind of tough coming back. And, uh, and uh, hold on, this is, this is what I'm dealing with right now, by the way. This is my distraction for the day. We got, we got, we got yeah, say hi. Hi, Cardiff, to everybody. There you go. We got the Delaney Hockey School just molding young kids' minds and teaching them how to use a proper backhand. Future Cardiff Devils <laughs> on there as well. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> what was the question? Sorry. So, from a mental standpoint, how difficult was last season to deal with for you? Uh, for me, it was tough. It was. Uh, it was something. I really expected that was going to happen. I didn't think I was going to need surgery, and I didn't think I was going to be out for that significant. So for me, it was tough because it's just like a, it's a daily grind pretty much every day. So you're just struggling to uh, to like come back, and, and hopefully you don't really know if you're going to be the same player. So it's six months of, of basically just waiting and, and trying to get back to, to playing form. And when he did return to the ISO, seven points in nine games, isn't a bad way to return after that long out. No, uh, that was the one thing I was worried about. I just didn't know what kind of player I was going to be when I got back, if I was still going to be just this fast and, and, and still be able to compete. So to be able to come back and, and be able to do that much uh, point production, and obviously, you know, when you're playing with guys like Joey Haddad and Joey Martin, uh, they were my line mates, it's pretty easy to put up points because they have uh, – Haddad had an unbelievable season, and, and the GOAT pretty much puts up good numbers every year. So uh, those guys helped. But, yeah, it was good to come back and be able to uh, – to get some points and just know that all that hard work was, was worth it during the year. And Todd Kelman, when you were announced today uh, as returning, said that he was shocked that you even played at all last season. What was it that you were doing that allowed you to get back? Uh, it was just a lot of rehab. It was literally every day uh, rehabbing. And obviously, Jade, our physio, was, was there every step of the way. She was huge to be able to get me back. But Every day, it was just trying to be able to build strength because you lose. I didn't realize how much muscle and stuff you lose. So... Uh, just doing a whole bunch of physio workouts, stretching, trying to get your knee back to at least somewhat playing shape and because everything stiffens up pretty bad. So it was just stuff like that. And, and Jade obviously helped tremendously with, you know, massages, stuff like that. And, and just being able to, to get it back to the way it was where it felt not 100%, but close enough to where I was confident enough to, to be able to go play. Now, turning our attentions to the upcoming season, um, with everything that's been going on in the world right now, if you have to change the way you prepare for a new season, have you had any uh, restrictions that have really limited you to, to training? Uh, yeah, so, like, obviously, like, I'm at an ice rink, and I don't think they're open in the UK right now. So, like, our rinks opened up maybe a couple weeks ago, so that's nice. So, you get to be, at least be able to skate. But, like, gyms and stuff here aren't open, but that's the only downside. Like, I was hoping... For me, I was kind of thought it was – I thought at the time it was good that we ended the season short because then I could have more of an off season to, to train. And obviously I focused a lot on my knee and not really on anything else when I was trying to come back. So it was, I thought it would be a little bit of a catch-up time for me to, to work on other stuff. But obviously, you know, with what happened in the world with corona, everything kind of got shut down. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where I think everybody's going to be on even – even playing field when the season starts because everybody, a lot of people still can't go to the gym. A lot of guys can't skate. So I think when the season actually does start, it's going to be kind of an even playing field for everybody. 
Now, staying on the topic of this season, obviously it's going to be the first one without Andrew Lord as the head coach. You've played against him, you've played with him, you've been a player under him as a coach. How proud are you to see him get an opportunity like he's got? Well, it's huge for him. Like, obviously, you know, players and coaches, like everybody wants to go and play or coach at the highest level they can. So for him to be able to get a chance in North America is huge. Like, obviously, you know, his, his statistics speak for themselves in the – in the EIHL, like he's obviously been a really dominant coach in the in the league. So for him to be able to to try to translate that over in North America, I think is huge. Like he's obviously super deserving of it. Like he's been huge for the club, and I think you know what the club and and like pretty much respect his wish to uh, well, they obviously do to let him go. Like they want to see nothing but the best for him. Like he's given the club so many good years and so many trophies and, and big wins that you know it's 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 very nice of a club to be respectful enough to one let him go and two be really happy for him because like, it puts them in a hard spot but like they're obviously nothing but excited and obviously guys who have played for him and, and know him like they're probably the same really excited because he's obviously a really good coach and deserves every opportunity that he gets and then obviously going into this season without Andrew Lord there's going to be a new coach coming in you're the fifth player announced to be returning to the squad is having a core group of guys who know each other's games played with each other week in week out for a couple of seasons now is that going to make the transition period a lot easier do you think I think it's I think it's a big big plus for the team because obviously you want to bring back as many guys as you want or as many guys as you can because you know like you said Obviously, it's a new coach, a lot of new systems, but if you're familiar with the guys you're playing against or you know their tendencies, it's just kind of one less thing you need to worry about. And obviously, every team, you're going to go through a little bit of a growing pains where you got new guys, you got to learn new systems. But at least next year, it's it's a little bit, you know, it's going to be a little harder to have new systems. Obviously, everybody's going to be learning it, but if, as long as you know – who you're playing with, what they like, their tendencies, stuff like that, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. It's easier to, to kind of learn. And it's going to be a little bit of a growing process for the whole team, but something exciting to look forward to. And for you personally as well, you can play both forward and defense. Is that going to be something that we see a little bit more of next season, do you think? Or is that something that's really going to help the team down the stretch for next year as well? Uh, honestly, like, it doesn't – I hope so. I hope you see it because I enjoy playing both, but it's obviously up to the coach and – what he wants with the team and and you know the season is crazy with injuries and stuff so sometimes you'll be able to play me at forward sometimes you won't because we'll have too many forwards and not enough D like it's one of those things where you just got to see how where the season pans out and, and what happens with that I'd love to play both I enjoy it so I get bored at one position so I can't I can't sit still for too long well, that's one thing I've noticed over, with the Devils over the last few years. Yourself, Bryce Reddick's done it, Mark Lewis. The amount of players they've had able to play forward and defense. Has that been something that's really contributed to the success of the team over the last few years? I'd say so. Like, obviously, you, like you said, Reds and, and Lou obviously playing forward. Like, you know, it's the one, the one good thing about guys on the team and, and obviously the strength of the team is that everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to win a trophy. Everybody wants to win the league. So... You know, for guys like that who can take a role and, and not really complain about playing that role, like, obviously, that's not the position they want to play. So, for guys like that to step up and, you know, accept a role that they don't – might not agree with, but it's for the betterment of the team, like, those obviously are great characteristics to have in teammates. And, like, I'd battle with those guys for a championship any day. Like, those guys did probably the hardest thing they could and, and suck up their pride and suck up what they want to do to play – you know, a position that, you know, it's not their normal position. And, and if you look at some of the success, like Reds and Lou had, like they were pretty effective at forward. Like they sucked it up for the betterment of the team. And obviously what they wanted to do is win a championship. And they, they kind of put their own personal pride and selfish, selfish you know, views on the side, which is, uh, which is good for them. One thing I, I noticed when I spoke to Mike McNamee earlier in the offseason, he, he mentioned that last season the team didn't know when they were beat at all. They always knew how to get something going in the final 10 minutes. Was that something that was a real driving point in the locker room? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously, like, we'd play games where I don't think, well, everybody in the room knew we weren't playing as good as we could, and then we were able to find the other gear. But, you know, it was, it was some of those – some of those times, you know, it was kind of nail biting where like it was down to the wire where like we should probably, we should have been, we should have played way better the entire game instead of keeping it, 
close and, and you know letting it go all the way to the third period and then ended up scoring one or two goals to win the game like we we kept a lot of games close so I think you know it was nice to know that we had that extra year but uh it would have been uh more uh exciting if we could have just finished games in the first period rather than drag them on a little bit now Good for look- the fans I guess <laughs> Now, looking forward to next season, obviously, it's likely to start again with the Champions Hockey League. This year, different format. Obviously, the league has to try and not impact other leagues too much, so it's going straight into a knockout. Are you excited about that, or would you prefer the group stage? Um, to be honest, I, I didn't really know it was a knockout game until about two weeks ago when somebody told me. Um, I don't mind the group stage. I like the knockout stage. Knockout stage is a little bit crazier because, like, any team – you're only playing two games, so like literally any team can kind of beat any team. It's a lot, it's a lot closer than trying to get to the group stage. Group stage is pretty tough, so like the knockout stage is, is kind of, I don't know. I think it, it benefits us. Like we could surprise a team and win win a game by a couple of goals, and then if we lose by less than one goal or something, like we could end up winning. Like it's anything can happen. So I don't know. It's it doesn't really bother me at all. <laughs> As far as the draw goes, though, getting a team like Fariasad, that's a difficult draw to contend with. But every year we see in the CHL, there's always an upset. Some team always upsets one of the bigger ones. What do you yeah. need to do to make sure that it's Cardiff causing an upset? Score more goals than them. <laughs> and don't let in as many goals as we score. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. It's, uh, it's one of those things where I feel like we tend to get all the Swedish teams who are very, very good at ice hockey. So, you know, you got to go in with, with a positive mind and, and just try to compete with them and, and at least play a good hockey game. That's probably the biggest thing you can do. And, and just, just try to compete. And I don't want to say keep it as close as possible, but, you know, you want to you play a good game and give them at least a decent challenge. And home ice seems to work quite well for the Devils as well. They seem to do quite well in the CHL when they're, when they're back in Wales. Yeah, we uh we got some good fans, and I think the the guys get pretty pumped up to play at home. So we had a good record in the CHL at home, and carry hopefully carry that over to the new CHL. And then for next season, yourself, Percy, do you have any goals for next season? <laughs> Don't get injured. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's pretty much my main goal. But no, it's uh just excited. I'm hoping the season starts on time and we can actually play. So right now it's kind of like everything else; everything's up in the air. So. For me personally, obviously, I'd like to win win the league. It was, it was kind of a shame last year that they didn't award a league winner, and that kind of sucks. So, obviously, I want to win the league. That's something I've never never won before. But, no, I just want to have a good season with my teammates and actually be productive, help the team out, and see what, see what happens. The way the season ended last year, does that provide extra motivation for the team this year? I think so. Like, I think for the guys that are coming back, like, obviously, it's a little bittersweet knowing that they just finished the season and didn't didn't award a, a league winner or anything. So, for a, for a lot of the guys coming back, you know, I think it's, it's motivation for them to for motivation for them to uh, come back. Well, Evan, we'll let you get back to your coaching, and I'm sure all Devils fans watching are will join me in saying we hope to see you in Cardiff in the not-too-distant future. Welcome back, and thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, cheers. Sorry, it's a pretty hectic day today. Got to hopefully teach some kids how to play ice hockey. I don't know. I don't know if they want to be learning. From, I'm only good at skating in a flat, straight line, so I don't know if they want to learn any skills from me, that's for sure. I'm sure they'll learn quite a bit from you. Take care. Yeah, take care. Have a good day. You too. Bye now. See ya.